welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Wolves of Shadowed Fate Episode 23 Chapter 124-128 Raven's POV I was visiting with Cheryl this morning when I got a mind link that we have visitors at the gate. I already suspected who it was, but Cheryl is still on fluids, and cannot get out of bed to go to the gate. Her son was out with my sons, running the course, and having fun. Kevin was needing this, he was consumed with fighting and training. More so than even my children who had been raised from a young age to spar and train. Cheryl had told me that he only started to train at ten, and for him to be where he is four years later shows how focused this young man really was. The gate guard had messaged both me and Brandon advising of the visitor and I stood up from my chair. I needed to let her know that I believed her mate was here, and that I was going to go have a talk with him. He needed to know what he did to her and I was going to make sure he understood what he had put her through. We have visitors at the gate. I have not confirmed it yet, but it seems like your mate, and children are at the gate wanting to speak with you. I will go to talk to him. Do not worry, he will not get in here, we will protect you and Kevin I said to her and turned to walk away. No, wait, I need to go, Raven Cheryl told me. No, you are too weak, you cannot walk, or stand right now. Just stay here, I will make sure he leaves. If we need to I will call your cell phone so you can speak to your children I told her. I knew as a mother myself, we love our babies. No matter how old they get, we still love them with our whole hearts. No, you don't understand. I have to reject him face to face. That is the only way to break the bond. I suffered so much the six months before I left. It has broken me down. I will not want to go forward knowing that type of pain could just come at me, unexpectedly. I refuse to be attached to him any longer, he has shown me how little I mean to him, with his own actions. I would also like to say goodbye to my children. If I can, I want to go to the gate Cheryl told me, and I have to agree with her. I nodded at her and stepped into the hallway to go to the nurse's desk to see if I could get some help. Thankfully her doctor, Maxwell Childress, was standing there, coming on to shift as well, because I needed someone who can tell me if she was strong enough to physically go to the gate. I motioned to him to step away from the desk so we could speak privately. Dr. Max, Cheryl is requesting to go to the gate. Her mate is here, and she wants to take this opportunity to reject him. I don't think that she will be able to stand the pain of it, but she is insisting on going. I would like your opinion on this, as I do not want to put her at risk, but I also understand her reasons for wanting to do so, even at this point in her healing I told him. I didn't want to give out more information than needed, but the rejection was serious, even for a wolf or she-wolf in perfect health. I see the frown appear on his forehead and I can see that he is giving what I said his full attention. He is worried about her, but they have formed a bond in the few days that she has been here. He cares for her, I think even more than a doctor would. I know that he knows some of her background, just not all of it so I know that he is weighing the pros and cons of Cheryl going down to the gate. If she is insisting, we need to let her do this. Frankly, I am amazed at the healing she has done up to this point. She has a very strong wolf, she is gamma born, and she trained up until the day she left, even with almost starving herself. I think it will be okay, but I will go with her, and she will have to use a wheelchair. I do not want her overtaxing herself by doing this. But I know what he has done to her, especially in these last six months. He almost killed her with the pain he put her through, and he needs to know what all he has done. 
If he cares for her at all, he deserves to know what he did to her, and I will be glad to tell him. This will probably exhaust her for the day, but the opportunity is presenting itself now. Cheryl might as well take advantage of it. I will have a nurse get her ready to go. I will ask the doctor I was relieving to stay. I have worked over for him plenty of times, and I need to be with her for this Max told me. I can see it all over his face, he likes her more than a regular patient. I think that it is wonderful because he is a good man. I am sure he will have a tough time of it because this Cheryl is not the same as the one I knew all those years ago. The old Cheryl was bold, and not scared to try anything. This one is hesitant and frail. She has been put down and told she didn't matter for so long that it took root in her as was allowed to grow. It is her identity now, and she would have probably stayed there at Black Moon until she died in dealing with it, if it wasn't for Kevin. Her love for him, her protection of him, was admirable. She was so focused on getting him out of there, even to the detriment of her own health. But I have been there before. I can count on one hand how many times I have fainted in my life, and it is once. Just once, with Just and Reagan going for round two, when I had not recovered from the first time they had S asterisk X. In talking to Cheryl, I knew that Blake had done it to her too. Those times when it is multiple acts of betrayal from your mate, they will almost make you beg the goddess to take you out of that misery. The pain was worse than childbirth and it will take your breath away. Dr. Max had a nurse dress her in some of the clothes that I brought her. It is getting chilly as it is fall now, and it is still early, so I get her a fleece-lined tracksuit, with a long-sleeved shirt. We usually run warm. I don't wear a lined suit unless it is winter because it is all that I need when I am out running errands. But due to her frail state, and being too thin she is not able to regulate her heat anymore. Her wolf is getting stronger each and every day. Soon she won't need them, but I know that we are at least two months away from that. Cheryl appreciates the fact that I am going with her, I didn't tell her that Dr. Max was going too. He was just doing a few rounds right now to check on his other patients for the day and see if any changes are needed to their medication while Cheryl is getting changed. I can tell that she likes him too, she always flushes around him and keeps looking down. He has been here for about ten years. His mate had been killed in a rogue attack on their former pack. The pack no longer exists as it was anymore. After the attack, several of the pack members that experienced loss had to get away from such bad memories. The pack lost over 100 members on that fateful day. The horrors stayed with so many of the family members that were left behind to deal with the aftermath of it and prepare their loved ones for the burial ceremony. Many could not continue to stay there with the memories, including Dr. Max, who packed up his stuff, donated most of his mate's things, and left. Dr. Max is a good man. He doesn't date around despite so many she-wolves who have thrown themselves at him since he got here. He is respectful, and never questioned the two-mate situation that we have. He knew that they had both marked me and that we were actual mates. He has delivered several of our pups. He knows that we are all bound together as mates, and is an exceptional doctor here at our pack. I am very happy to know that these two who have suffered so much in their lives, might have another chance at finding love. I think that this kind and gentle man is just what the doctor ordered for her. I chuckle at my little pun as Cheryl is assisted out of the bathroom to sit on the bed. I had told both Brandon and the gate guard to expect us in about 20 minutes as I knew it was going to take a little while for her to get ready and for us to get to the gate. I already had an SUV waiting for us outside. I keep a band on my wrist for when I put my hair up and asked Cheryl if she wanted her hair up. She usually leaves it down, but she hasn't had the strength to do it. It just gets brushed each day by either me or one of the nurses. She nods at me and I give her a high ponytail. 
It looks good on her, and I make a mental note to get her hair cut as soon as she is out of the hospital. It looks like it hasn't been cut in over five years. I have to admit the reason that I wanted to put her hair up, is because I want to see what he has done to her. She had wasted away while on his watch, due to his actions. His lack of caring for her got her to this point. I know why she didn't want to eat. His actions could result in her throwing up, and she was just trying to skip that step, so she ate the bare minimum for her to be able to operate. Not to starve herself to death, but because she knew his actions could make her sick. I know she did because I had asked her how her second day here was, with it just being us in the room. I will not tell her secrets, they are hers to tell, but I really wanted to give this a asterisk s a piece of my mind. His I love you, but and fill in the blanks were not good enough for me. There is no but when you love someone. It was saddening to me how many times he had said it to Cheryl. I love you, but you need to admit what you did I love you, but you cheated on me I love you, but unless you confess what you did, I cannot keep you as my mate I love you but, you refuse to tell the truth I love you but, you disgust me for cheating on me the last one was my favorite because he was disgusted at her alleged cheating, so he was going to do it to her. Cheating on her over and over again, all while gaslighting her. He is a real class act, and I cannot wait to tell him what I think of him, and his actions. I am ready. I do not want him to leave before I can tell him that we are done, Cheryl said, and she is braced like she is going to war. No more smiles, or happiness, just determination showing on her face to get this over with. She braced herself for this, and I squeezed her hand in support. I will be with you. Brandon and Justin will be coming too. They were just waiting on us to get ready. I will link them now to let them know that we are about to leave. The door opened and Dr. Max is pushing a wheelchair in to collect Cheryl. I watch him as he locks it in place before he unhooks her from the fore. He then gently picks her up from the bed and puts her in the wheelchair. I caught him take a quick sniff at the top of her head before he bent down and unlocked the wheels to escort her to the SUV. I think she thought that he was just taking her to the SUV. She was surprised that he stored her chair in the back and then got in the back seat with her. She smiled at him for doing this for her, but I don't think that she is aware of the fact that he has feelings towards her. She was so focused on getting Kevin here, and now healing herself, that she hasn't noticed it. I can tell that she is nervous the closer we get to the gate. I can tell by the difference in her breathing. I hope she doesn't have a panic attack. I sense a movement and Dr. Max is holding her hand. Her breathing settles out and thankfully she calms down. I have to fight back my smile, and I refuse to turn around. I don't want them to stop holding hands because they feel like I was watching them. We get to the gate, and I see that Brandon and Justin are already there. The gate guards are pushing the solid barriers back into place. There is no SUV here for my mates, so I am assuming that they ran here, and they are both in basketball shorts. I see Blake standing there as the gate gets pushed back, and he is looking around for Cheryl. He is clearly not doing well. It looks like he has run his hands through his hair several times while he waited. He is agitated and I hope he can remain calm, I see their other three children standing there and the middle child was the only one that was looking for Cheryl, or Kevin, out of the three of them. The back door of the SUV opened a short time later and I wondered what they said after the warrior and I got out of the SUV. Cheryl may have gone into a larger panic attack after we got out. I also wanted to give them a moment alone before she had to face Blake. Where is my mate? Is she not coming? Blake asked Brandon ignoring the rest of us. I was good with it, I didn't want to speak to him right now anyway. She had to get clearance from the hospital to come here to speak with you, 
Brandon told him in a cool tone. He was letting him know that he didn't like, or respect Blake, right off the bat with how he spoke to him. I was proud of Brandon, he does not back down. He was letting Blake know that he needed to watch his tone, or he could just leave. What have you done to her? Did you hurt her? Know this, if she is hurt, you are now at war with Black Moon. I will not allow anyone to hurt my mate Blake said with venom pouring out at us. Are you serious? You think we hurt her? She barely managed to get here before she passed out behind the wheel of your SUV. If she had still been driving when that happened, she could have wrecked and killed both herself and Kevin. That was all on you and Graham. None of us hurt her, you take all the credit for it I could not stop myself from saying to him. Blake's eyes look at me and they flashed between his and his wolf's color. His wolf is close to the surface and is not calm. He wants his mate back, maybe he should have made his human think before he acted. I didn't intentionally hurt her. Graham did this whole thing because we banished Reagan and demoted her to breeder since she liked to trick people into sleeping with her so much. It was a fitting punishment. I was on guard for the first five years, but he never made a move. He just started about five years ago, I was in too deep and never realized that he was ruining our relationship, instead of helping me repair it Blake said and I could tell that he was being torn apart by the guilt and sadness that he felt. It seemed like he really did want her back. Unfortunately for him, he had gone too far, I had the same bottom line myself. I was only able to get past it with Justin, because I found out the full story, and even with knowing that, the goddess herself had to help me get over it. Just stay calm she is here, with her doctor. I will tell you now that you need to stay calm, or this conversation will be over, and you will be asked to leave. The doctor said her stress needed to be kept to a minimum, and her just being here to speak to you has her stressed out. Please do not attack her when you do speak, say what you need to, and leave. I do not want her to have a relapse. She almost died, it is clearly the goddess will that she didn't. So do not go too far, Blake. I do not have a problem at all with going to war with Black Moon, if we need to Brandon told Blake, and I can tell from how Blake's jaw flexed he was grinding his teeth to keep from threatening Brandon back. An alpha's pride is a big thing. It is real, and any misperceived slight to another alpha could result in war. Brandon drawing the line before Blake could even see Cheryl angered him. He was only controlling himself because he needed to see Cheryl. That was the only thing holding him in place and calm right now. I heard the door shut behind me and Dr. Max went to get the wheelchair from the back of the SUV. He repeats the locking of the wheels after he gets it opened for her to sit in. We all watch as he leans in to get Cheryl to help her get into the chair. Cheryl put an arm around his neck as from the angle he is at he will have to take a step back with her in his arms to assist her into the chair. Blake's growl of anger at his mate being touched is loud. It is made worse by their looking so intimate together, we can all tell that it angered him. Dr. Max ignores Blake's clear threat to him, and gently assists her into the chair, kneeling down to speak to her with whispered words, that none of us can hear, which made Blake roar in anger again. Dr. Max unlocks the wheels to bring her to the gate, and as soon as he stops, he locked the wheels back again. I can hear her panicked breathing again as she looks at Blake on the other side of our gate. If he would calm down he would hear it too. Dr. Max put his hand on her shoulder to give it a squeeze. Blake cannot take it anymore and yelled out, Get your filthy hands off of my mate. Chapter 125 Cheryl's POV I feel like I am having a panic attack. Seeing Blake again, I can feel it all come back to me. All my anger, sadness, hurt, and pain comes flying back at me. His handsome face makes my heart jump at seeing him, as I still love him. 
but after all that he has done to me, to our son, I just cannot be with him again. I warned him for years, and for over six years I told him to not go too far. Once he does, that is it, I warned him over and over again. I cannot continue to love someone who shows me with every act and deed that words are just that, words. But actions, tell the true story. He may have loved me, he may still love me. But clearly the love he feels, and the love I feel, are not on the same level. I would never have been able to hurt him like he has hurt me. It is probably why Graham focused on Blake to do his dirty work. Because he knew that there was no way that I would have done the same to Blake, it just wouldn't have worked. My love for him would have prevented me from doing it. Clearly, his love for me would allow it. I stiffened at hearing the threat in Blake's tone as he warned my doctor to stop trying to keep me calm, and my anger at Blake comes roaring back up from where I had locked and tamped it down inside me. I put my hand over Max's to prevent him from picking it up off my shoulder, I will not let my mate threaten a man who has been nothing but kind to me. I open my mouth to reply, but before I can speak I heard Max tell him, you have no power here. You are not my alpha, and you need to know this. I will bring Cheryl fully back to health. It is only by the goddess helping her that she even made it this far. You almost killed her, and I can assure you that you will not get another chance at her if I have anything to say about it. I turned in my chair to look at him. He is acting as if he likes me. Like he like likes me, and I have never got that vibe from him before. He is a very handsome man, but right now, I have to recover from all I have been through. I do not want to rush into anything with anyone. I have my own mental health, and Kevin to think about. I just cannot rush into anything, I will not rush into anything, but I know that if I ever were to get involved with someone again, Dr. Max was the perfect fit for me. She is my mate, and she will be coming home with me and her family. I am here to pick her up. To beg for her forgiveness, and to ask her to please come home. I know I messed up. I have changed. I changed the moment you left the front of the pack house before I found out you ran away. I cut it off with everyone. It is only you, Cheryl. I am sorry I allowed Graham to twist everything up. I never saw it coming, I love you baby, and I never meant to hurt you. Graham is locked up in the cells right now. If you will return with me, I will make him admit his crimes to the pack and then you can kill him. Please, I won't be able to make it without you. I need you, the kids need you. We all love you, mistakes were made, but I am so sorry. It is breaking my heart, and all I want to do is make it right for you. I want you and Kevin to come back with me, right now, so we can continue to live together. We were a happy family before. We can be again if you will just give us a chance Blake said to me, and I have never seen him this humble in his life. It was a shock to me. He never admits to a mistake. He may actually feel bad about what he did too. But it is too little, too late. Now that he knows everything was Graham's fault, he is willing to listen. Where was that man when I was begging him to listen to me? Now that I have been proven correct, he is all about letting things go and moving forward. He never gave me any grace, even when I begged for it. I will not allow him to come waltzing in here and tell me oops, I screwed up, but forgive me anyway. That is not going to happen. He demeaned me over and over again. Multiple times in a day sometimes, shaming me for things I never did. Allowing both me and Kevin to be mentally, and physically abused because he was positive that I had cheated on him. I can fear the same helplessness I felt before sliding into place. I feel the tears come to my eyes, and I cannot stop them from sliding down my face. Blake is happy, he sees the tears and thinks that I am overcome with love for him again. 
but he murdered the love I had for him. Every time he slept with another. Every time he came home from sleeping with them, and while I am still trying to recover from his cheating, trying to sleep with me too. Why? You just slept with them, why would you possibly need me to? It was disgusting. Those acts were the worst. I might be able to get over the awful things he said, eventually, with him showing me that he didn't mean it each day. But him deliberately sleeping with other women, and the awful women he chose to sleep with. I am sorry, I will not be able to do it, I cannot forgive that. I can close my eyes and see him letting them sit on his lap, at the dinner table and shame me in front of the whole pack, and my children. Those memories cannot go away. The rest of his slut squad sitting at just the next table over waiting to try to catch his eye. Blowing kisses at him when he glanced over at them. They would do anything to make him happy. I feel the bile rise up and I fight to keep from throwing up. He has me so upset, I now wish that I had listened to Raven and let her give him a piece of her mind before kicking him away. I may not be strong enough for this today. My eyes slide to my children. I see tears in Casey's eyes as she looks at me. I see she feels bad now, but she has been a spoiled brat for the last two years. Blake is making her into another Reagan, and I did everything in my power to stop him. I see Robert and he is upset, he is clearly looking for Kevin, but I don't want Kevin here. He is doing so much better, and I don't want him to have a setback by seeing the rest of his family, especially his father right now. I see Forrest and he is looking upset at the sight of me in a wheelchair. I guess they were so busy with what they wanted to see, that they ignored me and my health. They really didn't care that much for me for the last few years, since Graham had everyone take sides. I was just their mother, who cooked, cleaned, and took care of them. But their dad was able to give them the money that they so desperately wanted. Now that I am gone, I am sure that the evidence of all that I did for them is now a lot more obvious to them. I can see that Blake is losing it, and the pack should be concerned about it. But maybe they should have thought of that before I was condemned by all of them. I had no support from anyone, not even my parents. Only Cassandra had been kind to me, which brings the guilt I felt over killing her right back. I have to tell him, as I see the hope in his eyes, and he brought the children closer to the gate to try to manipulate my feelings into feeling enough guilt to try to come back with them. I do not want to drag this out. I am already exhausted and want to go back to my room. I felt weak and upset, I feel like an elephant is sitting on me, and I can barely breathe correctly right now. I am overwhelmed, and I made a mistake. Raven was right, I was not ready for this, so I need to clarify my position for him. I am sorry Blake. I will not be returning to Black Moon with you today, or ever. I will be staying here, with Kevin. He is happy here, he has friends now. I can trust the people in this pack to not hurt us. I loved you, and I love my children, but you poisoned them against me. They believed you over me and left me and Kevin all alone together. Only able to depend on each other. So even though I will always love them, they will want to stay with you, after all you are the one who can give them what they really want, things, stuff, and possessions. I gave them love and took care of their every need, but that was never enough. I learned that lesson just as well as I did the one you kept giving me. The one where you said you loved me, and then kept cheating on me. Speaking so horribly to me. Put your hands on me, and did things that you should never have done to me. The thing that I actually get from you, is anger, and hate. You might think you love me, you probably did at one time, but you do not, not anymore. Almost half the time we have been together I have been punished for loving you. For providing you with four pups I told him and shock crosses his face. 
he really thought I would just fall into his arms and be happy to come back to him. I spent almost a year thinking of how to get myself, and Kevin, out of that pack. I didn't do it on a whim or as a joke. It was life and death. Kevin's life and I took it seriously. Deadly serious. I see him look down at the children, and then they all started to beg me to come back. That is an even bigger slap in the face. If they really wanted me back they would have done it on their own. They would not have needed him to encourage them to do it. I started to cry harder from seeing that. Blake sees my crying increase and gives me a soft smile like he is glad that I am willing to reconsider after turning him down. He thinks the tides have changed, but he just made me even more adamant about my decision. Do you think that is going to work? Raven stepped forward closer to the gate and spoke. She saw it too, and I am glad she is about to lay it out for him because I am crying too hard to do it. You need to mind your own business. You are not involved in this Blake tells Raven, and gets down on his knees to look me in the eyes. Brandon and Justin both growl out to let him know that he went too far, but he is ignoring them both. He is humbling himself in front of me, and that is another thing that he has never done before. He is obviously willing to do anything to get me back, if only he had been willing to listen to me when I was begging him to. I told him over and over again that when I hit my limit, there would be no coming back from it. Oh, you are literally on my doorstep. This is my business. I am speaking to you for Cheryl. We are both mothers and Lunas and I see and know far more than you think I do. You disgust me, you bring the children with you, knowing that they are not here to actually beg her back. They may know the whole story now, but I see what has been happening to her there. The children picking your side over hers, you bought their love and affection. They are spoiled and believe me when I tell you I can tell spoiled. My sister was spoiled. I see her in your own daughter. She may miss her mom a little, but I see what she is wearing. She is my sister Regan all over again. I believe you are already familiar with her work, or so I have heard. You are creating another generation of spoiled, entitled, brats. Who cares only about themselves, Kevin is not spoiled. He has worked for the last few years to try to get a sliver of approval or affection from you. But you withheld it from him. Now that you are not totally blind from wearing the blinders that Graham put on you, you are suddenly wanting to make it right? Well, tell me, Blake. How can you make this right, for Cheryl? Raven asks him, and I want to hear his response. I will work every day to be the man that she fell in love with. I will hold a town hall again, as I already had one, and told them all what happened. But I will hold another so they can see, and she can see, how much she means to me. Yes, I f'd up, repeatedly, but I thought she had cheated on me. I was overcome with jealousy and wasn't thinking straight. I will work every day to make it up to her every day until she realizes that it is only her in my heart. I messed up, but I want to fix this. For me, and for her, for Kevin. I want our whole family to be together again Blake said and I wish I could believe that it would work. Blake, I heard what you said, but I remember that I begged and begged for you to listen. You refused to listen to my defense. If you had listened to me for even a moment, we could have stopped this at the beginning of this whole thing. You refused to listen to me. In my heart, I think that you knew the whole time. You just liked how things were going. You had the whole pack eating out of your hand, taking your side, and still sleeping with me. You had the best of both worlds. You knew my bottom line, I had warned you several times as I knew where Graham was going. I recorded it. I knew the timeline I had to work with. So why would I forgive you, Blake? When you knew where my point of no return was, 
and you crossed it anyway. Numerous times, with the pack slots? What would possess me to allow you to sleep with me ever again after you did that? I asked him. Graham said that you were still too strong, and needed to be broken down. That you would not admit your wrongdoings until you got to that point. I didn't want to, but I needed you to admit what you had done. For me to be able to forgive you, I needed that closure. I had no idea that it was a lie from the start. I wish I knew that he was so willing to let it go so long before he put his plan into motion. I messed up. I feel terrible about this. Please just let me make it up to you Blake begged me, and he did look sorry about it. But if he really meant it, he wouldn't have done it in the first place. Blake, you had the five of them with us, at the dinner table. You rotated them out and sat one of them with our family to eat. You didn't care how disrespectful that was to me. How it made me feel to see them with you sitting in your lap, mocking me. The fact that they were being treated with the same respect that I was. Considered to be a Luna too. It was the highest form of insult. Just go back, let them continue to help you, and they can take turns being the Luna. You chose them specifically, for a reason, so let them continue to take my place. I learned a lot about you in the last six months, Blake. None of it pleasant. None of it is good. I was sick to know what you really thought of me, and no amount of words or kissing up now will fix it. Yes, you made a mistake, and it is much bigger than you thought it was going to be. The gall that you have to come here, and ask me to come back. Are you delusional? Because I told you in the letter I left you that I am done. I told you in the text that after you crossed my bottom line, there was no coming back from it. You were warned, and yet you did it. Over and over again. Do not lay this at my feet, when you were 100% invested in it with your tongue down another she-wolf throat at my dinner table. In front of the pack. In front of my pups. In front of the very son of ABH who led you there. You may have drug your feet in getting there, but you sure walked across the line when you wanted to. Do not come here now that reality has set in, and want me to forgive you. Because I will not. Not now, and not ever I told him. But Graham said, Blake started. I held up my hand and looked him dead in the face and said, then go ask Graham why his brilliant plan didn't work out for you. Oh. That's right, it did. His brilliant plan was never to help you, Blake. It was always to tear me apart. So go back to Black Moon, and you two can celebrate together the success of your endeavor. You both won, and Kevin and I lost. Congratulations I sobbed out the last of it, and said, I want to go back to the hospital, please. Max leaned down and unlocked the wheels to take me back to the SUV. Blake started screaming, No. I won't let you go. I will go mad without you. Is that what you want? Do you want the whole pack to suffer because of the plan that Graham had? That is not fair to them, Cheryl. Mistakes were made, big ones. I made them and I am so sorry about it. I will make sure that from now on, I only listen to you and my ranked wolves. No one else. I need you to come back. You were there Luna for fifteen years. Please, I swear to the goddess that I will make this right for you. I will do whatever you need me to do to fix this, to fix us. I swear I didn't realize that I had messed up so badly. Just give me another chance and I will be the mate that you fell in love with. I want you and Kevin back with me. I want you both to come back and see that I am telling you the truth. I promise that if you do this if you do give me another chance, I will not fail you again. I am begging you, Cheryl, please. For me and our pups, please give me another chance. 
Do not include me in your pups anymore dad. Go away and do not come back here. There is nothing for you here. You had your chance, you had more chances than you ever deserved, and you didn't use them. You kept making the same mistakes. You wanted to hurt us both, and believe me when I say that mom is right. You were highly successful for someone who now says that he didn't mean to. I cannot count how many times mom told you that you were making a huge mistake. That she never cheated, and yet you had the pack do your dirty work for you. So why should we give a damn that the very pack who was completely on board with hurting us both, gets what is coming to them? Seems to me, they signed up for this very thing. They all took your incorrect side in this, let them suffer the consequences for it I look up at the road toward the pack house and see my son, Kevin, coming from behind the SUV. He is closely followed closely by Jax, Liam, Chase and Dex. This is not going to be good. I wanted to protect him from this, and I failed. I didn't want him to know that they were even here. I didn't want him to feel bad about my choice to bring him here but from the looks of it. He is glad to be here and glad to have the support of his friends in it. I wonder how long he has been standing there, I hope he hasn't been here for long, but I have a sinking feeling that he has been here for much longer than any of us knew he had been. Chapter 126 Raven's POV I see the boys come out from behind the SUV and I wonder how long they have been here with us. I see Brandon and Justin looking at them and they mind link to ask. I see both their lips pressed together in anger and I bet the answer is almost this whole time. I shake my head and look back at Blake who is stunned at what his son said to him. He shouldn't be. Kevin lived it. He lived with getting bullied and picked on for a long time. I knew what he went through. I too was born to an alpha who treated me like St. I said the same thing to Graham, as soon as I had been given the opportunity and a safe space to be able to do it and after I escaped from Silver Blade. Kevin, I am sorry that I picked Forrest over you. I miss you I see the middle child with Blake calling out to Kevin. I saw how excited he got when Kevin came out before I turned to see who was there. I see Kevin glance over at him and give him a small smile before focusing on his father again. I see the anger flare back up in his eyes. I know the feeling. I was raised by Graham. I am fully aware of the man he is, and just how despicable he can be. We will not be leaving with you, Alpha Blake, so you can stop wasting all of our time, and just go back to Black Moon. You made your choice over and over again. It was the same one. You choose everyone but mom and me. You wanted them Kevin motions towards his brothers and sister and I am okay with your choices. Because they are yours to make. I realized after I got here, that my worth is not what any of you thought of me. I have had more support here, and more positive interactions here in four days than I have had in the last four years at Black Moon. So yeah, Graham can be punished. Go ahead and punish him for everything he did. Punish him for all of us, for what he chose to do to us. But if you think that will make any difference to Mom, or me, you are mistaken. You can't fix years of abuse Dad. You can't because you did this to us. You willingly allowed your pack to abuse us. You didn't keep what was going on between you and mom. You told the whole pack, you made her look bad in front of them. She had to put up with too much. She was ridiculed and embarrassed every single day. By the ranked wolves that you love so much, and now I hear that two of them are directly responsible for why it happened. Mom didn't do anything, to anyone while we were there. The only mistake she made was the mistake of loving you and accepting you as her chosen mate. You didn't care when you allowed the abuse to happen to her, or me, either. Yet, yeah, I won't be giving you the chance to do it, because as far as I am concerned the choices that you made, let us hear. 
Stop blaming Graham for you not having the goddess given sense to stop, and think for yourself. Because that is all on you. Not mom, not me, that was you Kevin said and I can feel his pain as he said it. My tears come back. My sweet boy wanted to defend me. I tried to hide it the best I could from him. I did. I wanted him to have a normal childhood. I wanted him to be appreciated and valued just like his brothers and sister were. But I failed. I failed to protect him from a monster, one who turned his own father against him. Maybe I should have killed Graham. Years ago before we even got to this point. But hindsight is always clearer than when you are in the moment. I might have killed him, but I would have probably been killed for doing it. Who would have taken care of Kevin then? No, I made the right choice. Graham will eventually figure out exactly why I killed Cassandra. Then he will have to live with the knowledge that he was the one who pulled the trigger. I may have physically done it, but it all to pay him back for what he had done to my family. He pushed me to punish him, and I did what I had to do. His choices have consequences, and God is willing before he dies, he will learn that very valuable lesson. Kevin, I swear to the goddess that I have made changes already. I made them the day that you left. I got rid of all my girlfriends. I was going to get rid of Kara too, but your mom beat me to it. I promise you that from now on, I will be the father that you deserve. I am proud of you. The fact that you just kept training, and getting stronger, even without my encouragement. You are my son, you are strong, and I will make sure that if you come back we will all start over again. No extras at our table. I will apologize to your mom, and you, in front of the whole pack. I was going to let your mom kill Graham, but you can if you want to. Whatever I need to do to make you happy, I will do it. I had a broken heart because I felt you were not mine. I wanted you to be, and in dealing with this whole situation, I struggled a lot. I was not thinking clearly. I am sorry, I was wrong and I will make it up to both of you. I want you to come home, with me, son Blake had turned and was facing Kevin. Blake was still on his knees and holding the bars like he wanted to rip them open. I could tell that he wanted to just come in here to take us back home. I could tell that Blake was serious about what he said. He did want us to come back. But to what? A pack that would grudgingly accept us. I have been shamed, for almost seven years, since Graham put his plan into play. It has been over six years since my own mate told the whole pack of my betrayal of him. Six years of the whole pack calling my son a bastard. And for what? For Blake to be revered and celebrated. His whole pack gives him sympathy for what all he has had to go through and endure. Because his mate is a cheater, or so they were told. We already had enough against us when we arrived. People know who we were. They knew we had a price on our heads. There was nothing we could do to protect ourselves there, what makes us think that it couldn't happen again? I did make changes, you can ask your brothers or sister. I stopped with the other girls. Graham said all the alphas do it. I will send them to Aaron's pack if I need to, so you never have to look at them again. I just want you both to give me another chance. I will not fail you again, Cheryl. I swear it Blake speaks again and allows the pain he is feeling to pour out. I feel it, I know he is hurting, but goddess, it has only been four days. I haven't even cheated on him. This reminds me, we need to cover that before he leaves. I, Cheryl Peters, former Luna of the Black Moon Pack, reject you Blake Adams, Alpha of the Black Moon Pack. I rescind any and all connections to Black Moon. I refuse to return there for any reason I told him, and Blake grabs at his heart and slumps down from the pain of it. I hurt too, but I am managing it. 
I refuse to accept it, Cheryl. You are my Luna, I will never have another. I will return until you decide to allow me to have another chance. Just know this, I know you complain about the pain I gave you when I cheated, but you haven't felt it, have you? I stopped. I stopped that morning before you left after I saw you trying to hide your tears from me. I felt horrible about what I have done. I did, I swore to make things right for you that moment, and I will. I will keep Graham alive, until the day you and Kevin come home. We can kill him together if you want, for the acts against us. But I will not stop until my dying breath Cheryl. You have been the only woman in my heart. The only woman that I have ever loved. I refuse to stop until you admit that you still love me too, and come back home. Please baby, please don't reject me. I cannot live without you. I will be back a month from today. I will try again and again each and every month. I will never give up on you. I swear that I still love and want you Cheryl Blake called out to me. Blake, I believe that your idea of love, and mine, are very different. Graham chose you for a reason. He knew you would follow what he said. He tried to plant seeds of doubt in me too, and I refused to believe him. I refused to accept that you would do anything to hurt me. I even set myself up, in my confidence at my believing that we were so tight, so impenetrable, that he could never hurt us. Imagine my surprise at being wrong. Graham did try to tug that line with me, but the difference was I knew that type of pain. The pain you feel when your mate is with another. I felt it when you were with Reagan, that was how I knew you had cheated. I knew that you hadn't since, and I told him to leave us alone. But no matter how many times I asked you if you had felt that pain when you were accusing me of cheating, you blew it off. How bad could it be? How much could it hurt? Always acting like I am a hypochondriac when I knew you had been with another. But how would I have known if I hadn't felt that level of pain? Fine, do not accept the rejection. I suffered so much, that I can work through it when it does eventually come back. Remember? You like to remind me of your higher s asterisk x drive because you are an alpha. You need it more than I do, right? Even though we had gone almost 15 years without you cheating on me. I was enough for you, at one point. But after what you did to me. The humiliation, shame and dishonor that you heaped on my head. You made me the laughingstock of the pack. It doesn't matter if you took it back now. The contempt that you allowed the pack to show me, I am sorry, Blake. The damage has been done, and you did it willingly to me. I refuse to go back, I refuse to allow Kevin to go back where he had to carry that stigma for all these years I told him, and I cannot contain my pain. I do not know any of your backstory with Cheryl. But I will tell you that I think that she is a wonderful woman who deserved to be treated with love, and respect. Two things that I think you are sadly lacking. I wanted to tell you that once she is healed from all you have put her through, I plan on letting her know my intentions toward her. I feel her stress and anxiety right now, and I do not want to add to it. I just wanted you to know that after she is no longer my patient, I plan on asking her out. I plan on showing her how a real man treats someone that he cares about. Because you haven't, at least not lately, and I think that your time with her, is up. It is time for her to find someone better. I am glad that the goddess allowed her to make it to us. I honestly don't know how she did it, other than just sheer willpower. There is no way that you couldn't see that she was wasting away. Unless you just didn't care about her health and well-being. From the sounds of it, she would have died at your pack, as they would have had no reason to save her. You surely didn't let your pack know that they needed to take care of her. She couldn't have been eating much, she is 40 pounds underweight. She is literally skin and bones. 
I am not making a threat to you. I care for her, and I plan on learning more about her. As far as I am concerned, you have lost all rights to her. You should have accepted the rejection she offered. But I think that you getting a chance to feel exactly what it feels like to be betrayed, might be the very best thing for you. Maybe then you would have more compassion for a lady who has done nothing wrong except pick the wrong man to love Dr. Max said, and I looked up at him and I know my eyes were huge with the shock of his announcement. He has always been kind to me, more so than any of the rest of the staff there, but I have to say that I didn't see it coming. Do not touch my mate. I will kill you for doing it. Alpha Brandon, I swear to the goddess if that happens I will bring my men to your gates and attack Blake said to Brandon. He had made sure to glare at Dr. Max first, and Blake was pissed. Brandon shrugged and said, if you think you can beat us, go ahead and attack. I cannot stand what has happened to her. She had paid much more of a price than she ever should have. I feel terrible for that for her. If she decides to date Dr. Max, I will not stop them. They are grown, adults. I just heard that you had not one, but five girlfriends. Seems you were so busy you never saw what was happening in front of your face to your mate. I could tell at first glance that she was seriously ill. There is honestly no excuse that you could have to make me think that this happened overnight. This was probably the result of over six months of her being so sickened by what you were doing to her, that she couldn't hold down her food. Her being sick, is all on you. Do not threaten me, or my pack members. I take war seriously, and I already have a feeling it very well may come down to it anyway. Oh, and just so you know, Graham lied, he cheated on his Luna, but I have never cheated on mine. I didn't understand fully what Brandon was saying, but I knew that they had been training for a war to come, and I am praying that I am not the cause of it. I would rather go back to Black Moon with Blake than for me being here to bring the war to their door. You accused her and just glossed over the lack of pain you had, Blake. You never felt it, and once you feel it, believe me, you will never forget it. It is a pain like no other. I cannot imagine what Cheryl felt at your hands. You wanted the support, and sympathy, of your pack. You wanted them to know what all you had to deal with as you had been cheated on. They all believed you, you are the Alpha, so why would you lie to them? It may have been made up, and they may be aware of it now, but the stigma that Cheryl carries at Black Moon cannot be erased. She was bullied by everyone there. Sorry, doesn't cover it. I cannot see how you can stand there, and want her to forgive you for years of torment and abuse. You have barely dealt with her being gone for four days, yet you felt not one ounce of remorse for your actions. It is disgraceful that you keep blaming Graham, when all you had to do, was stop and think for yourself. Stop trying to guilt her into coming back with you. Stop trying to use your children who have clearly been bribed to try to beg her back. I have seen this before. My sister used to do the same thing. All in an effort for her to get more stuff. The truth is you finally wised up to how badly you messed up. How badly things are going to go from here out, for you. I may not know the whole story, but I know my sister enough to know that she pisses some people off. She kind of has a knack for it. Have you punished them? The men who set her up. The very ones who got this ball rolling by getting her attacked at her new pack after you ended up making her a breeder? Getting Graham to make up a plan of vengeance for her. If I knew it had happened, I could have warned you. Graham only cares about very few things. He cares about Cassandra and Reagan, oh, and his money. So three things Raven tells him and he looks at her without speaking. We can all tell that he is angry, but he cannot argue with what she has said, because she is right. She hit the nail on the head because he hadn't. He had done nothing to them. 
even when we first heard of what happened, and didn't fully know that they had such a big hand in it. Michael had told Aaron and his men the lies that Garrett and Mark told him, right before he was killed. Garrett and Mark hated Reagan, for whatever reason and felt that she deserved what she got. So Reagan has to live her life scarred up, all because they wanted her to get even more punishment than she had already been dealt. They were clearly vicious when it came to Reagan, which is laughable to even think of how her situation could have been worse. They wanted her more punished, than her becoming a breeder. There is something wrong with them, as that is the worst thing that you can be made to do. I had even tried to talk Blake out of it, to just make it be Aaron, and one other of her choosing. That would have made it easier, but he was so angry, he just wouldn't bend. I wanted her punished, and I only tried once to talk him out of it, but he was angry. So angry that he wouldn't listen to reason. S asterisk X is different for women than it is for men. It is much more intimate for us, plus we have the right to refuse to sleep with anyone we don't want to sleep with. Men can detach themselves from it, excuse their own bad behavior, and still claim they love us after doing it. Blake, I may not know the whole story between you either, but I do know this. I am willing to bet that those men are still wandering around, happy and free from any punishment. You got rid of your official girlfriends but did they get punished? They hurt your Luna too. Do you not have any bylaws there to protect the Luna? I am betting you don't. They're giving respect to women who are not the Luna to their Luna's face, is a punishable act. Yet, I suspect they have received no repercussions for their actions. They dodged the punishment that was coming from Graham at this point. Graham is many things, but stupid isn't one of them. His big plan was probably to take you down, first, and get you out of the way. Then he would take control of the pack by using your men as a front for the council after you go crazy. Don't worry though, he would have gotten around to punishing the two of them, but it looks like now they will dodge their punishment altogether. I can understand why Cheryl cannot believe you. You may have told the girls that they are over, that you will no longer be with them. But yet they are still there, in your pack, an act that lets everyone know that they still have some pull with you. That you cannot bear to let them go which enforces the thought process that you will be with them again. They are not going to leave you alone. They will try to get you back if you couldn't stop yourself from sleeping with them before, how are you going to a week from now? A month from now? A year from now? But the men who got this whole thing started, who were the root cause of Graham's vendetta against you both, haven't gotten any punishment at all. It is a slap in the face to Cheryl. Don't come back here, Blake, there is no point in it. Don't waste her time, or ours. Not until you make some sweeping changes, and can show her that you are serious about it, why bother? They both know where the pack is, and if they ever wanted to return to Black Moon, we will bring them there ourselves. But please don't insult our intelligence by trying to act like you got anything at all done there Raven told him, and her tone brokered no argument. I saw the look on Blake's face, I saw that he was going to anyway. What would you have had me do? Cheryl left me, and I cannot focus, my mind is only on her, and Kevin. I cannot sleep at night. I can't do my paperwork because I miss her so much. Graham had been trying for years to get me to sleep with them, any of them, for over two years before I actually did it. I fought against it, against him, for over two years. Because I was loyal to Cheryl. It wasn't just like I fell into bed with them. If I didn't know better I would have sworn he was in on it with them Blake said and then stopped speaking as it hit him. His eyes fly straight up to mine. He then looks over to Raven who nods her head like she is proud of him because he finally got it. I never thought of it, but it is entirely possible. 
If Blake fought Graham for over two years on this, Graham probably took Blake's unwillingness out of the equation to put his plan back into motion. But that would mean that his little girlfriends have been involved in it too. I bet that has been a very rude awakening. I will investigate this new information, and I will be back in a month. I will have answers for you at that time. Please, Cheryl, do not make any rash decisions before then Blake said to me, and then pointedly looked at Dr. Max. Max didn't flinch or look guilty. He also didn't blink or break eye contact with Blake. That was a clear indication to Blake that he was not going to listen to him or obey him at all. Blake was angry at the disrespect, but he had things to do himself. I could see that he had never thought of it before. If I had known that Graham was on him to cheat on me for this long, I might have asked him about how it started myself. I would not put it past Kara, and unfortunately for him, Kara is no longer available to answer anything. I know that he is going to make some changes, but it would mean more if he had come up with it himself, instead of Raven having to lead him there when she heard what he had said. Just because he realizes what he has done now, doesn't negate all he has done to me over the past several years. I will wait and see, but to be honest, I no longer have faith in him, his ranked wolves, or his pack. But since I am not ready to rush into another relationship right now, he has some time to do whatever he thinks will matter to me to fix this. But after all this time, I just cannot see it helping either one of us to move past this. The trauma I had to deal with, might just be too much for me to overcome. Chapter 127 Blake's POV Goddess, I am so angry. How did that not occur to me? He is Reagan's dad, and she did it to me, so it is entirely possible that he did it too. That is going to deserve what he gets. I mind-linked Garrett and Mark, as they already know what they are looking for, and told them to go check Graham and Cassandra's home for a drug like Reagan had used. I am quite sure that the girls would have it on them too, I wasn't around Graham so he probably gave them their own pills to keep me in line. I will have them go to Kara's room next to sweep it. Then after they show Brady and Travis what we are looking for, we will hit the girlfriend's apartments to search. I am so sure that they will find something, I cannot believe that it didn't occur to me sooner. I already have the mental plans in place for the next step. I will have them take the girls down and put them on the other side of the cells. If I can keep Graham from knowing what is coming, I want to. I am so angry right now, and then I noticed that I had accidentally bent the steering wheel. My children are not speaking as we fly back home. I need to get this dealt with, and now. How embarrassing is this? To be drugged by those sluts to get me to sleep with them. This was worse than the Reagan incident as far as I am concerned. I will have to have my men with me or I really will beat Graham to death. I don't want to free him that quickly. I forced myself to calm down. Are Mom and Kevin really not coming back to the pack? I heard Robert ask me quietly from the back seat. I don't know yet, son. I hope she does, I hope they both do. I have not been good to either of them for a while, and they will not be easy to convince. I need to show your mom that I have truly changed, and prove it to her. I hope that she is willing to give me another chance. I can promise you all that I will do what I can to bring them both home. I miss them too I told them, and Robert nodded to me in the rear view mirror. He accepted the answer that I gave him. I will have to work to point out all the things that their mother did for them, that they never even noticed. They need to speak up, on their own, and beg her back. Casey gave me a weak smile, and I can see that she is upset that they didn't just come back with us. She is probably also upset at how bad their mother looked. She used to have her hair up in a ponytail all the time, but for the last few months, she has just left it down. 
with it up in that ponytail today, I could see how slim her neck was, how frail she truly was. That stupid doctor was right, she was dying right in front of me, and I could care less about it. That wasn't normal behavior for me. I might have cheated on her, but I have always loved and cared for her. I just may not have shown her the same care in the last few years. All because I was a jealous. I will not let that doctor just swoop in, and take her from me. He was pissing me off with that, and Cheryl not even realizing that he liked her. Goddess, she needs to pay more attention. I don't want him to have the opportunity to charm the pants off of her. I remember the threat that she made to me in the note she left me the day they ran away. Cheryl has always been so strong and at pain of what I was doing to her, is what took her down. I am not looking forward to feeling it myself. I am not going to lose my mate, the woman that I have cared for more than any other, to some freaking doctor. I will not allow it to happen. I meant every word of what I said, but after so much was said in front of the children, I think that I will leave them at home for my next trip. We do not need to speak so openly about what all happened, but I know that Forrest knew what happening, they all did was. I made no secret about it. Even going so far as to make out with them at the table, in front of my family. I believe that I will come alone, and bring her favorite flowers. Get something special for her, maybe like an engagement ring to help keep the men away from her. I will have to find out what flowers are her favorites again, maybe Billy can help me with that. I will look at pictures of our first five years together. I surprised her all the time with flowers. I made her a priority, and I haven't for a long time. Raven might not need to be in our business but her words were the slap in the face that I needed. She was correct, I let work, and so many other things get in the way of my mate. She was always there, in the background, making sure everything was the best it could be for me and our pups. Graham swore that no matter what we did to her, she wouldn't leave because she loved me so much. He really meant that she wouldn't leave because she was trapped, and couldn't leave. I kept her on a tight leash, not letting her go places, and where could she have gone? They were still being looked for after all this time. She was trapped, and I was blind to that too. I listened to Graham because it made me feel better to think that she stayed here because she loved me. I was better that the fact that she stayed here because she had nowhere else to turn. I am glad that she gave Graham the same slap in the face he gave her. I taught her an eye for an eye mentality. I got the first link back before I even made it halfway back home. We found it, they are little pills, and they were in the kitchen cabinets. He didn't even try to hide them Garrett told me through the link. Okay, thanks for the heads up. Grab Grady and Travis and go toss Kara's room to see if you can find them there too. I didn't hang out with Graham so the girls had to have been dosing me and I wasn't aware. Once you find what you are looking for, just go and have some warriors take the other four girls down to the cells. Wait, change that, take the warriors to their rooms first. I don't want them to have time to hide the pills or get rid of them. You can have a warrior stand by at Kara's room, while you search the other girls' rooms. I have a feeling that they will have them too. I do not want to give them a heads up that they have been found out. They were probably planning on laying low for a little while and then starting up again by dosing me. That is done now. Graham is going to have to pay this time. I cannot believe that he would be so low. I am halfway home, let me know if you find anything else I mind link back to Garrett. He tells me he will give me an update as soon as they check the girls' rooms. I will have to think of a proper punishment for Garrett and Mark. Raven was absolutely right, if not for their interference with Michael we would have had no real involvement at all in what happened. Things would have been totally different as she might not have been attacked. Yes, 
she would have still been a breeder, but she liked every one of them, with the exception of Michael. He was very rough with her, as he was trying to punish her. He did that based on what they had told him. They told him that she had drugged other men in my pack. That it wasn't just me that she had drugged. They also implied it had been his good friend Travis, that had been drugged too. She never drugged Travis, he wanted Reagan. He wanted to claim her as his chosen mate. He was just too scared to go against us all. I have to admit that I was mad at what she had done, I was furious that she almost cost me my mate and my firstborn pup. My children were important to me. Everyone in the pack knew it too, I was over the moon happy about us having pups. I was furious, so I punished her in the harshest way that I could think of, I made her a breeder. Was that bad, yeah, it was. But I think she earned it, she went around and took the consent away from others, so I felt it fitting to give the same thing back to her. It worked out for her. Clive loves her more than anything. Sometimes I think that Aaron loves her too, even with having his true mate. The way he speaks about her is the tip-off for me, he respects her, he listens to her, and he values her opinion. Much more than he values his own mate's opinions. I have not seen her for fifteen years, but I have heard that she has changed a lot, she became a good mother, which shocked out of me and Cheryl, to be honest. I know she pissed off Aloise a while back, from what Aaron said the last time he was here, Reagan was in the right for it. He said that Reagan is a great fighter and she challenged Aloise to fight to the death to be Luna. Aaron said if Aloise had accepted it, she would have definitely lost her life. He seemed a little disappointed about it. I thought that with Aloise being an Alpha's daughter that she would be able to fight, but I remember Reagan couldn't fight when she got here either. Cheryl had to protect her from Sierra. It was what caught my eye, my mate is a badass and I am so proud of her. Aaron was upset that his pups with Reagan went to live with her, but he told me that it was the best place for them, until they could defend themselves against Aloise. So without him saying what it was, I knew that Reagan had been in the right for her actions. That makes my heart clench thinking about how much I loved and respected Cheryl when I found her. How much I really still do love her almost from the moment I met her. I chose her, and she was perfect for me, how did I let things get this far? I swear to the goddess, if Graham ends up costing me my mate, I will kill him slowly, and he will wish he was dead well before I take his pitiful life. The kids are back on their tablets, they know I am focused on other things right now, and I am focused on exactly what I am going to be doing to five people as soon as I get back to Black Moon. I didn't give a damn about letting Black Adder know I have Graham in my cells. I am positive that they already knew that information. Just like I am sure that they know exactly where Reagan is too. It is almost like they either don't care, or have something else planned right now. I know whatever it is, the council will be involved with it. I will give Aaron a heads up when I get a moment. I will also help him with his vampire problem too. I need to deal with my anger, and I am ready to kill them all right now. If I get back the report that I am sure that I am about to get, I will probably be getting my wish. Another point was made, by Raven, about our bylaw and protecting the Luna, she was right. We have them, and they are very specific about things that are unacceptable to do in a pack. Like affecting the relationship between the Alpha couple. This is an older pack. Some of their rules were less important than others but they had good laws and protection for the Alpha and his Luna. The pack was much smaller before I took over, but I never changed the bylaws in it. I felt that it was a good thing to leave them in place. Especially after I made Cheryl my chosen mate. I wanted her to be protected as much as I was. I should have figured out this whole thing way faster than I did. Blake 
they are all in cells, and we just got through searching their rooms. They had two different pills in each of their rooms. One of the pills was the same as in Graham's home, and the other pills are different. Looks like ecstasy and the other one is unknown at this time. You will either have to get them to tell you, or we need to send it off to be tested. Kara had both bottles in her room, too. Mark and I are going back out to Graham's to check it further. We will take Brady and Travis out there with us to search again. We made a thorough search. Knowing how sneaky and underhanded Graham is, we want to make a second sweep, with more of us to make sure we didn't miss anything. It makes sense that he would be the one supplying it to them. He should have a bigger bottle of his own probably in his bedroom, or bathroom. Mark and I are going back out there with Brady, and Travis to find it Garrett linked me. I will be there in about ten minutes. I would like some good news I linked him back and cut the link. I slowed down my speed because I am almost too angry to concentrate. I have plenty of time, as I was actually closer than the EDA I just gave them. I need to think about what I am going to do. I need to do something big. Something that makes the whole pack aware of what had happened. Something that lets my mate know that I was played by Graham. That I was tricked, to get where we were now, but I never intended to cheat on her. I had help, and we are going to get to the bottom of it. But these girls will be made an example of for their willing participation in all of this. I guarantee that it will be a cautionary tale to the rest of the pack for the bad choices they made. I bet he paid them, they knew the risk involved, and apparently, they thought that the reward for it would be worth it. We shall see because I will not just kill them. I will think long and hard before I just let them off the hook like that. I started to think of what would be the best punishment for them when it hits me. I believe that we can take care of two birds with one stone. I will have to let Aaron know that I have a solution to his problem as well. This is one problem that I will be happy to help him with. I guess I will be seeing Reagan again, even if I never thought that I would. I guess I need to bury the hatchet with her. I bet she is going to be pissed when she sees me though. If she already knows what happened, she will be. If not, I will tell her the whole, terrible story. I will make sure that she knows that is entirely her father's fault. She can come and get her mother's body if she wants to bury it at Blood Tracker. I will allow that for her, I will also let her visit her father if she would like to at that same time. I don't know if he will actually get to the point of it being his own fault that Cassandra died if we don't plant that seed ourselves. It will be my pleasure to do so, with him, and with Reagan too. He needs to know that it is his fault, all the way around. It is his plotting to kill our son and break us apart, that made Cheryl run away from here. But he has caused me, and Cheryl, a great deal of pain. He caused my son a lot of pain. I could see it in his eyes today. What I did to him, he will never forgive me for. I hurt him so badly, he might not ever recover from it. I was glad to see that he had made friends. They seemed to be very protective of him. I liked how they lined up with him in a V formation to show that if you messed with Kevin, you were messing with them. It is breaking my heart to know that he has gotten more support from a place he has only been for four days, than at his own pack. Yes. I plan on making those girls sorry that they ever agreed to the deal they made with Graham. I also plan on letting them know what their fate will be before it happens. I will be moving them closer to his cell so that he will have no peace at all for those nights. I also need to go down and make sure that he is enjoying the new artwork that we have installed for him. His wife was a beautiful she-wolf, as were his daughters. Let me rephrase. Reagan and Raven were both beautiful. Just like their mother, I know that he is enjoying the posters that we had made up of Cassandra. They came out so well that I sent some of the pictures of him and Cassandra together, to be enlarged as well. 
I left three framed pictures on the desk, so he can see the thought and care that she put into the frames. He may have even seen her place them with care into the frames. He may have been trying to drive me mad, or insane, at the loss of my own mate. I was headed that way, at the start of it. Now I am focused on getting him back for what he did, and getting my mate and son back to Black Moon. I swear to the goddess even if she doesn't agree to return here. I would consider taking him to her, just for her to kill. I would do that for her. But first I will make him suffer. I was never a man that liked to te people. I prefer to just kill them, outright. But I have to say that I really like the way I am coming up with ways to punish those who have crossed me. I was a kinder alpha with my Luna by my side. I think that the years together made me fairer to my pack members, and kinder as well. She softened my hard edges, and they should have appreciated that about her. I am not saying that regular pack members should have challenged me, but my ranked wolves should have questioned me about it. By losing my Luna, having her torn away from me like she was, they should have known how much I loved her. But I am sure that Garrett and Mark held back from doing it because it would bring their own actions to the forefront. They didn't want that, but it will be coming around to them before they know it. How he planned this out many years ago and probably laughed his way to sleep each night, at me doing his bidding. I will make him pay for all of it. No matter what, Graham Sullivan, will figure out quickly that he messed with the wrong wolf this time. Graham needed to be taught a lesson, a life lesson. He forgot the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do to you. It was a human rule, based on their Bible. Apparently, their God liked it too as it is mentioned more than once, in Matthew and Luke. I am going to flip it on Graham. It is meant for people to treat people with kindness, and love. Just like you would want to be treated yourself. But I am changing it up, I am going to do to him what he did to me. I cannot take his mate away, my mate already beat me to it. But I will plan against him, I will torment him, I will hurt him, just like I was hurt. I will make sure that he will receive the punishment that he has earned and I pulled up to the Pax gate with a smile on my face. I have not smiled for days, but yet, here I am. I take the kids straight to the dining room to eat their lunch as I continue to make plans for what I will do later on. I feel a visit is in order. I think that I will see if Aaron is free to talk to me today, so I can let him know that I believe I can help him solve his problem. I also want to get a nice visit in with Graham before I move his new roommates in. I want him to get the full experience, as I do not know when we will be moving forward with this. I will let them know what their punishment will be after I move them to their new cell, that way I ensure Graham can truly enjoy the next few nights. The plan is perfect, and it also gives Graham a little heads up as to what is about to be coming his way. I know the girls will be horrified, but they will be reminded that they chose their own path, and so they chose their own punishment. I see Garrett and Mark walking up to my table and they are smiling. Brady and Travis are a few steps behind them. We finally found it, had to damn near tear his room apart. He had a secret storage box built into the bottom of his fancy closet. If Travis hadn't accidentally hit it with his foot, we would have never realized that it was hollow. It had a button built into the side of it. You had to feel around to find it. It was actually quite impressive. He had quite the stash in there too. I put his stash in the safe in your office. Oh and we brought this too Garrett hands me a pillow. Why are you giving me a pillow? I asked him. It is Cassandra's pillow, it has her scent. Even if you don't pass it to him, he will still catch her scent, and it will cause him pain. He is a piece of crap, but she was his mate, and he will want her scent around him Garrett told me. I remember doing the same thing as I tried to sleep. 
I held her pillow to me like it was her. I couldn't stop myself. It did help me to finally fall asleep. I will enjoy putting it into play, I do not feel sorry for anything that Graham is about to experience. Do I feel sorry for the girls, maybe a little? Because they are going to have a hard time with it. They should have a hard time, they plotted and colluded against the alpha couple. They only have themselves, and Graham to blame for the spot that they are currently in right now. No one else did this to them. They were blinded by money and power. They got both in this deal, but unfortunately for them, their time has run its course. I almost wish that Cheryl was here to see what was about to happen here tonight, as it will be a good start. Maybe I will record it on my cell phone. I am very thankful to Raven for reminding me to take my head out of my A asterisk S. I am thinking clearer than I have for a long time. I will have to send her some flowers for her help with this. Some for Raven, with the thank you card, and some for Cheryl for her to know that I still love and want her. Now I need to find a place that will have the sodium cyanide that I need. I need to get a few things in place first, and I plan on making full use of all of Graham's money to make it happen. I want him to know that this isn't over, not by a long shot. His nightmare is only just beginning, and I plan on making him suffer. Chapter 128 Graham's POV 4 Days I have been down here in this hole, for 4 days. I am being treated like an animal here, and yes, I get it. I am an animal, but I rarely phase any more, I stay in my human form 90% of the time. I have gotten used to the finer things in life. Like a nice home, a nice vehicle, a beautiful mate. The cell is totally unacceptable to me because the living conditions here are horrible. I need to speak to Blake about this. I will not stay here in this filthy cell. I need a new mattress and a pillow. I need the cell cleaned up, as there is blood on the floor, and it smells disgusting in here. If I have to stay here, at least make it livable. That obviously trying to torment me. I look back out and see my beautiful mate smiling back at me. My eyes are automatically drawn over to my favorite picture of us together. It was at her Luna ceremony and she was stunning. She was so very beautiful. You can barely see the little swell of her pregnant stomach in her satin dress. We both smiled into the camera, and that was probably the happiest day of my life. It was her favorite picture too. I look over that the smaller version of it, sitting on that damn table, just out of reach. I close my eyes, but I still see her lovely face smiling back at me. Blake surprises me with how well he knows how to torment people. He was a reactive man, quick, and decisive. He makes decisions quickly and had them carried out. It was one of the things that I liked most about him. He didn't carry it out, or draw it out for long, he made a decision and took care of the problem. That was why I knew that he would end me quickly. I knew if he ever found out what I was doing behind his back, he would be pissed. I also knew that he would just kill me quickly. In fact, I was counting on it. Blake is nothing if not predictable. I am okay with it, I didn't want to suffer anyway. I tried something and failed. Losing Cassandra, killed a part of me, and I really didn't have anything to live for anymore, except Reagan, and her children. Seeing the grand pups though, brought back what Blake did to her. That is the whole reason that I am here in the cell. He could have just banished her and sent her away to the human world. That would have actually been better for her in the long run. But he wanted to make a point about crossing him. He is an alpha, I could understand his anger, but I paid him a lot of money to let her live. She might be happy now, but she wasn't when she got there. The worst part was that she is now permanently scarred, because of Blake and Aaron. She should have been safe there, and she wasn't. 
I heard voices coming down the hallway towards me, and I am going to tell the guard that I refuse to eat the crap he has been bringing me. I deserve food from the dining room, at least that was semi-edible. Not like the crap from down here. It was unpalatable. I may be locked up, but they still need to feed me something I can actually eat. I am stunned to see Aaron and Blake. It is almost dinner time. Why is Aaron here? He always comes first thing in the morning, not at the end of the day. I watch as Blake puts a pillow down on the desk. I catch Cassandra's scent immediately. I want that pillow, he needs to give it to me. Why are you here so late? It is almost dinner time, you usually come in the morning I asked them. Oh, don't worry, we won't be staying for long. Aaron here has been having an issue with vampires at Blood Tracker lately, so he will have to leave soon. He doesn't want to be out after dark, it really isn't safe there Blake tells me. My blood chills, that is not good. Vampires are disgusting killers, and I am horrified that they are there. Their whole pack is in danger, and I am worried for her, and her family's safety. Is Reagan okay? I asked before I can stop myself. But they would already know that I would need to know the answer to that. Yes, both she, Clive, and all of your grand pups are all okay, for right now, Aaron said. The right now part of that answer was the troubling part of that sentence, and it is hanging in the air. What are you saying? What is going on there? I asked them. One of the vampires has announced that Reagan is allegedly his mate. Apparently, being mates with a vampire is very different than how we operate. He made us a deal. They would stop coming and killing our people if Reagan considers going with him willingly Aaron said to me. I cannot read his expression. Is he serious? There is no way that she would consider doing that. Please do not tell me that she is even considering it. But I already know that she would, she would if it meant her pups were safe. No, I refuse to let her do this. She cannot do it. I won't let her, but I bet Aaron is totally okay with it. As he needs them gone, and the sooner the better. No, no, she cannot do that. You need to talk some sense into her. There hasn't been a problem with vampires for almost thirty years. Where did they even come from? I said to them. I told her the same thing. We all know that they cannot be trusted. There is no guarantee that if she did go with them, any of us will be safe. I will be having to leave here soon, as even though he told Reagan that he would give her a few days to decide, that doesn't mean that they won't come back to kill a few more of us. We can't take the chance or be unprepared. But, I have to tell you, Graham, Reagan was considering it, as an option Aaron told me, and I almost collapsed in fear. She isn't prepared to deal with vampires. They lie, and she cannot trust them. You cannot trust them. They will hold her to her part of the bargain, but they will not keep up their end of it. Please, if you listen to nothing else I say, do not trust them. Protect my Reagan, and don't let them hurt her. She is all I have left I was almost begging him. I just wanted you to know that we are having an issue with them. I came here to see if Blake would allow Reagan to come and speak to you tomorrow. Just in case Aaron spoke again, and I could tell that he was worrying. He didn't want Reagan to get hurt either. I am sure that this vampire problem was causing problems for the whole pack. I will say that she really stepped up to help out. She and Trevor, well the four oldest children, all excelled with research on vampires. They went out and got several things for the pack to try to hold them off. We went out again today to stock up, and we will go out again tomorrow to get the last of it completed. I didn't trust them when he gave her the ultimatum. I told her the same thing this morning when we spoke, but you know how she is, 
she is willing to do almost anything to protect our children. She really became a much better mother, than any of us ever thought she would. She gave me strong and intelligent pups. I really could not be more proud of them. Trevor will make an excellent alpha Aaron said to us, and I was proud of Trevor too. He is very smart, and he has Cassandra's kindness. He is a good teenager, and he will indeed be a great alpha. I was proud of him as well. I am glad that Aaron could see his value. I was worried after his mate had children for him. I could see that she wanted his son to be named as the rightful heir. Her son is a brat, and he has no redeeming qualities at all that I have seen. I was glad that Reagan took her children away from Aaron's evil mate, a little over five years ago. If she had tried again, I would have had her dealt with while she was out on one of her little shopping trips. She made a lot of them, and she was begging for me to take care of her so things can be easier on Reagan, and her children with Aaron. She was vicious, and Reagan was just leaving her alone. She should have fought her for Luna, there was no way that Reagan could not have beaten Aloise. I know why she didn't, Reagan wanted to stay with Clive. She still liked Aaron just fine, but she loved Clive. She wanted to stay with him, and their children. Cassandra and I supported her because it made her happy. He takes care of her, and he killed Michael. Clive is a good man, and I am very glad that Reagan has him. We have another issue, Graham. One I need to discuss with you Blake said. The hallway is suddenly filled with angry female voices, and I am getting a bad feeling about this. They get put in the cells next to me, and I know without seeing them exactly who it is. They are all yelling about having been put in the cells, and I stepped back away from the bars. I am going to stay silent. They have no idea that I am here just yet, but I know that Blake has an agenda and I just need to wait to see what he is going to do. Quiet, Blake said in a slightly raised voice, and the women all stopped talking. Thank you, ladies. Today I went to Black Adder, to speak to your Luna Cheryl, Blake starts to say and the blood drains from my face. I know that this is going to be a much bigger problem than I thought it was going to be. Yes, Graham, funny enough, your name actually come up while I was there. Your daughter, sorry, excuse me, Cassandra's daughter, Raven mentioned something to me, that had not occurred to me. It seems that they have welcomed my mate Cheryl, and our son Kevin, with open arms at Black Adder. Raven was making a point today, and the fact came up that I had resisted you, and you wanting me to take up with other she-wolves, for over two years. Raven was kind enough to remind me of who you are, and who Reagan was, and that got me thinking. So I had your home searched, and Kara's room searched and once I had these ladies locked up, I had their rooms searched. You see, I couldn't let them know that was going to happen. I couldn't give them a heads up that a search was coming. I needed to catch them by surprise, and I did Blake said to me. The hallway is silent as we all wait for him to speak, and he didn't. He just took turns looking at each of us and letting the suspense build. Do any of you care to make a guess on what the search is found? Blake asked a few minutes later with a smirk. The hallway was completely silent as we were all well aware of what he had found. He might not have found all of it though. I did hide the second half of it well. I just had the ecstasy out, as I had just started putting it in Cassandra's drinks. She had stopped sleeping with me a long time ago. Back when I had my girlfriends, it didn't bother me, but here, it was just me and her. She had finally forgiven me for all the pain I had caused her, she just needed a little nudge to get her over the last residual effects of anger that she was still carrying against me. She was still angry at me for doing that, but she stopped sleeping with me the minute my foot slipped. I was not aware that a chosen mate could feel it when you cheated on them. 
she never said a word to me about it when it was happening to her all the time. She just stopped sleeping with me and never told me why. She just finally blew up one day and caught me by surprise when she went off on me. I almost suspected that she knew. She even mentioned to me that it was odd that she would just fully forgive me, and be willing to sleep with me again. I don't know how she could have though, it would have been impossible for her to figure out. I was the only one who knew about it. She might have suspected it, but I know that there was no way for her to be able to really know that I pushed her into sleeping with me again. I just needed to start having s asterisk x with her again. I missed her so much. I missed being with her, and she was glad to be back in my arms again. My heart clenched as I realized that I would never be able to hold her again. To bury my face in her hair and just breathe her scent in. I can feel myself relaxing right now, just thinking about it. I have given her permission to visit here in the morning, see you, and take Cassandra back to Blood Tracker with her to bury on her property. Aaron approved Cassandra being buried there, so those hurdles are both taken care of Blake tells me. He has a straight face. He has not mentioned what he found yet, as he already knows what I have done. There is no reason to tell him. I will never admit to it, but at least I know that my end will be even quicker now. Blake pulls out a chair and gets comfortable, another chair was brought for Aaron to sit down. Blake leaned forward and slid the pillow through the bars to give it to me. Maybe he didn't find anything after all. Why would he be kind to me if he had? Well Graham, I will start with the bad news. Raven, Brandon, and Cole all know that you are here in my cells. I am sure that the council is aware of you being here. They seem very content to leave you here, with me. I just wanted to make you aware of a few things. I don't need to interrogate any of you, because I already know the answers Blake tells us and I am suddenly much more nervous than I was before. That really isn't good for me. There is no opportunity to lie if you are not asked a question. First off, Graham, you helped me out a lot when you first got here. I appreciated the help, and I did what I promised to you. But then you focused on me, and my mate. You focused on my child Graham, who is 14 years old, and you have been targeting him since he was 10, what is wrong with you? I am here to tell you this, I will not be killing you. I may take fingers, toes, or remove a limb, but I won't allow you to be killed. You are going to suffer a great deal at my hands. In fact, I guarantee that once these ladies find out what their punishment is going to be for colluding with you to ruin my family, you will wish you were dead. I think that you got used to the calm Alpha Blake, you know, the one whose mate kept him happy, and kind. I think you really thought that was me from then on, didn't you there Graham? You would be wrong Graham. Now that Cheryl is gone, all I have to look forward to now is punishing you if things go bad. I will have two of my ranked wolves with me down here for each visit, just to keep me from killing you. My only happiness from now on will be from paying you back for the next seven years. Your mate was taken away, do you know whose fault that is, Graham? It's yours. You drove Cheryl to do it. Just like you felt driven to get vengeance for Reagan. You need to know that. Reagan is going to know that before she comes to visit you. I will make sure that she knows that Cheryl may have pulled the trigger, but the suffering that you gave her for the last seven years, drove her to it Blake told me and I refuse to accept it. Your mate killed mine, don't twist it around to suit your agenda, Blake. Cheryl made you make Reagan a breeder. She was happy about it, she should have spared her. Reagan never deserved what happened to her Graham yelled out in frustration. Need I remind you what happened the first day you arrived? Sierra was going to kill your precious Reagan. She didn't like her flirting with me. Cheryl saved Reagan from Sierra. Sierra was a fighter, 
and believe me when I say that she was a good one. Your precious Reagan would have been killed, if not for Cheryl. You should never have done what you did to her. What did you think was going to happen when I found out what you had done? I bet I know the answer to that too. You just assumed that I would just be killing you quickly. I am so sorry to inform you that you will not be getting put out of your misery. You are going to wish for death, but you will be surprised to know what you can live through by the time I get done with you Blake tells me and I shudder. How did he know what I had planned? The worst case scenario was him killing me. I see that I failed in my planning because I didn't see this other option that he just laid out for me coming. I have to say that I would rather he just end me no, but I know he won't do it. He is going to make me suffer, and I already know that it is going to be bad. So, every day, until my mate and son come back to me. I will make sure you know exactly why you are in the cells. I will also let you know what real pain actually is Graham. Your love of coming up with well thought out punishments for those who have wronged you. Well, I have recently learned that we both have that in common with each other. I also went over the bylaws for our pack. It seems that there are some very strict penalties for hurting the alpha couple, especially when it is intentional. You have hurt my Luna, you hurt me, and our son. You were going to murder Kevin, using his own brother to do it. Thinking that I will just forgive him because he is the heir to the pack. Trying to keep your own self out of the line of vision, so you wouldn't get in trouble, and no one would suspect you. Because you may have led him to it, but you wouldn't have been the one to actually kill him. It was quite brilliant actually, and it seems like my mate just did the same kind of thing to you. She let you push her so far, that she snapped. She wanted us both to know that we had succeeded in breaking her. You were the one pushing her break, so where does the blame lie? It hurt Cheryl to do it, but she wanted you to live with the same pain that you had forced her to live with. So I can guarantee you, as long as you stay here, however long it is, each day will be just as bad, or worse than her days here were. Don't forget the main part of the issue was her major anxiety of whether or not today would be the day her precious son gets killed Blake tells me and he doesn't try to hide the threat. He fully intends to make me suffer, each and every day. He is right he is about to make my life a living hell, and there is nothing that I can do about it. Or if you want to pay for more such audiobooks, you can send us a request in a private Facebook group, or join us on WhatsApp, a link is given in the video description. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode. Join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.